Hello everyone, how y'all doing? You're very welcome to the second episode of Autism and Me and you're very welcome to my channel if you are a new viewer. Before I start this video, I just want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who sent good goodwill messages on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and everyone who shared the video as well. Thank you so much you know, for your support. I really, really do appreciate it. It, is, it really means a lot when people are messaging you, messaging you say they have res much respect for doing this you're an inspiration, you're so admirable, it really does mean so much and I want to thank you all so so much um, for sending me those messages, no, I really really do appreciate it and it does mean a lot. So in today's video I'm going to give you an explanation of what autism actually is. So for most people autism is a subject that they don't know much about, they don't actually know what exactly it is. So Basically, I was doing a bit of research. I have my own opinions. I know I have my own reasons why I think autism is. I know I have my own explanation of it. But, so I was looking it up, actually. So I was basically looking at some facts, basically, on it. And I was looking at, um, basically, like what other people had to say on it. So basically, I was so I took some notes, basically. I have some notes here, basically. So autism is a lifelong developmental dis disability. And it, it affects how people perceive the world interact with others now that would fall into the line of communication now which is what most people would consider autism to be someone who can't communicate with others obviously as you know with autism there's so many different sides to it so it's not just it's not just um the communication side of it you know so that so part of that sense would fit into fit into that now as well as that autistic people they see the world differently and and if you are on the spectrum, I said the last year, if you're on the spectrum, like I am, we're on it for, I'm on it for, I and other autistic people are on it for life. There's no cure for it. Once you're on the spectrum, that's it. And often people feel that it is a fundamental aspect of their identity. Now, I always suspected myself that I was, that I had something like autism growing up, even like when I, I would have, it wouldn't really diverge much into it. I would have suspected something was different. Was different, and and one thing I have knows as well. Actually, when talking to pe people I know about this who do have autism, they see it as part of who they am, and they have no problem with it. And they shouldn't like. You, there's no problem with being autistic as at all. Like you know, it's just part of who you are. There's no there's no shame in it. I'm not ashamed. No one else should be ashamed if you're on the spectrum. Now they share different di different difficulties. You know, but you can be affected in different ways. So you can be affected with learning difficulties and mental health issues and other conditions, meaning that people need different levels of support. Now, for example, I suffer had learning difficulties, like uh, I struggled in school. I had an SNA beside me. Now my learning difficulties would have been dyspraxia and uh, DCD. Uh, developmental coordination disorder other examples of learning difficulties can be dyslexia which is a common one and attention deficit and and and, and also down syndrome can also be a, uh, a learning difficulty as well and mental health yeah i know I, i've heard of a few people who are on the autistic spectrum and they would have had mental health issues as well mental health issues um growing up and during part of their daily life so with the, with the different levels of support that they need, all people on this spectrum learn and develop uh, differently. With the right, but with the right support, you can be helped to live a fulfilling life of their choosing. And yeah, I think that a big credit to the people like um, who helped me when I was growing up. I would have gone to occupational therapists and other people as well as psychologists too, and they really did help me de develop. And my parents deserve big shout as well because they would have really helped me as as well because you do need help when you're autistic but like if you get the right support of help you can you're you can function just as well as anyone so and it's and the common with autism there in the uk there's over seven hundred thousand uh diagnosed and but and doesn't matter what your background is anyone could be on the spectrum but i've noticed as well actually reading this actually kind of if it's surprising to hear that it's mostly men who are seem to be diagnosed actually it seems to be more a male thing than a female thing 
and I've kind of noticed that I haven't ran into many female people who have been on the diagnosed. It has mostly been on the male side. I think it's interesting. So and how and they also people ask how do autistics see the world? Some some of them find the world overwhelming, and yeah, I I can see where I can see that side of it. Like you know, they struggle with change. You know, for example, like moving house, moving school, moving country. Change can really can be a huge thing with autistic people. They really struggle with that change in their lives, and and this can also lead to anxiety. Like you know, going places as well. Just new things in general can really affect people like that like i'm not too bad on change but i know some people who are on spectrum like it is a they really struggle with cha change and some autistic people do find it hard to relate to other people like there's often that myth thrown out that they don't have empathy which i think is which is not true absolutely not you know like i would i i i, I often talk to close friends about you know private stuff so to say they have no empathy is incorrect and hold on a second sorry and taking part in everyday life with family and work and all that that kind of links back to like difficulties really that um they struggle to do simple tasks and yeah that's the thing with me as well like i i would sort of start, start simple tasks that they're probably they're simple enough to everyone else but i would find that simple task a challenge like you know i'd be I would do do well in other things that would take a lot of skill, but there are certain things, there could be a simple task that I, that might seem similar to you, but it would be hard to me. I can definitely see where that is coming from. And some some other people know exactly how to communicate with, with interact, sorry, sorry, interact with other people. And some people can struggle to build a rapport for autistic people. I think that it because... If they do, is that they don't make they haven't been explained, as they um, they haven't been explained. Basically, they haven't been explained. Basically, they haven't been taught what about autistic people, how they see things differently. So that's and that's what and that's what I say. Me when I say like people don't understand autism because they haven't been told exactly what it is and how it can affect the person who is on the spectrum. And and some pe and autistic people do will wonder why are they different. I and like you know I I I can definitely relate to this. I would have wondered myself why am I different? Like why am I seeing things differently? Why don't I like this? Why don't I like that? Why am I seeing it things seeing it from this side and not other sides? How can they understand it but I don't? So yeah, that's um. <sighs> I hope you understand the explanation of this, and the diagnosis for it. Um, the team that that call have the, that. Give the diagnosis usually an occupational therapist and like a psychologist and a sp and, like, and speech and language teacher as well and signs of autism is like repetitive behavior lack of language like i know grow when i was younger my mom would have told me that i would have repeated the same words i wouldn't uh, i would never say a new word i would struggle to start sentences so she would have noticed it and that's probably the most common with diagnosis like you know before, like you would not notice that, like the repetitive behavior and like just lack of language, basically, and that's one thing even with with autistic people now as well. I know, I remember, I know Brendan Maher, a teach who the Tipperary Herder would have said that he works with autistic people who have a huge difficulty with language. So that's it for today's video. I hope you really enjoy it. I hope that you have more of an understanding of what autism actually is. If there's any other questions, feel free to message me here on YouTube or. Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, I'm happy to answer them. So yeah, I'll be doing the next video in the next week or two. I hope you really enjoyed it. Thank you very much for watching. I shall see you soon. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.